Rugby America's Cup gets back underway tomorrow with the three challenges, Ineos Team UK, Italy's Luna Rossa and American Magic racing for a chance to face Emirates Team New Zealand. That challenger series is called the Prada Cup and you can watch it from Auckland's Viaduct where Zach Fleming joins us now live. Zach, our organisers expecting big crowds tomorrow. Well, it's expected to be a beautiful day in Tamaki Makoto tomorrow, Melissa, much like today. So it probably will be very busy. But the big question is, will it be busy enough to justify the large amounts of public money that have been spent on hosting the America's Cup here in New Zealand? The boss of Prada this morning said that he's just ecstatic that the Cup can still go ahead during a pandemic. And he urged Kiwis to recognise how lucky we are and come down and get into it and watch some racing. The teams have been practising right through the new year. They say that they have gotten faster and Team New Zealand actually capsized their boat the other day. So the racing is expected to be thrilling regardless of whether you're a yachting fan. The Prada Cup goes, could go until early February and we'll have more on which teams to look out for and where the best spots to watch from are later in sport. Zach Fleming live from the Auckland Viaduct. Looks One of the teams vying to challenge Team New Zealand for the America's Cup has given their boat a major overhaul and are now anxious to find out if they'll be competitive. Sir Ben Ainsley's Ineos Team UK has been under intense pressure with Britannia well off the pace in the World Series event before Christmas, losing all six races. As Michael O'Keefe reports, they admit only time will tell if they've done enough to turn their camp campaign around. You could forgive Sir Ben Ainsley if he appeared a little weary today, considering what he and his team have been up to. Since the World Series, we've got a new rudder, a new elevator, a new mast, a new mainsail, new headsails, aero modifications to the hull and we've changed the systems to the hull, so we've been quite busy. The changes were needed. Britannia were winless in last month's World Series and in particular struggled in the light breezes. But will the changes be enough to ensure the Challenger Series is a three-boat race and not two? Even Ainsley isn't sure. I think we can be competitive, certainly in the medium to stronger wind range. The lighter airs, we really, we still don't know. While the next few days will be telling, they won't be decisive, with all the skippers today stressing the need to continually improve throughout the regatta. Our development started the Monday after the, the World Series event and really has continued on through to yesterday. You cannot seem to stop to, to improve your boat uh, today because otherwise you're going to finish last. We can't control the weather, so we've got to get ourselves competitive in those lighter airs. We've definitely made some big jumps, but I think there's a bit more to come in that area. Race director Ian Murray has seen improvements in tactics as well, which should make for more exciting viewing. I'm starting to see the sort of match racing evolve and the aggression of the start come to the surface. And it'll all come to a head tomorrow as the three teams do battle for the Prada Cup and the right to race Team New Zealand in March for the old mug. OK, Michael, the Brits struggled in the lighter breeze. What are conditions expected to be tomorrow? Around 10 to 15 knots, Ollie, which is around the middle of the wind range permitted for the Challenger Series, which is good news for Ineos Team UK, who race twice tomorrow as opposed to just once on Saturday and Sunday, which is when the winds are expected to die down. Now, the race director, Ian Murray, said today he expects good sailing breeze for all three days of racing. Good stuff, Mike. Thanks very much.